having already talked about how incidence has absolutely no effect on either sensitivity or specificity or positive or negative predictive values, let's come to prevalence. Well, first of all, what is prevalence? Prevalence, again, is just the amount of people who actually have a disease. In this case, if we, let's say we were supposed to, if we were ch supposed to chart out all the people who took a screening test, so we'd have diseased people here and healthy people over here. Of the diseased people, they could either be people who were actually tested positive, meaning they were correctly tested positive, so they would be true positives, or they could be falsely tested as negative, yet they have the disease, so they would be false negatives. So these people make up make up the actual people who have the disease. In other words, the, the prevalence. Prevalence is the people with the disease, which is true positives plus false negatives. So in this case, the prevalence would be 50 plus 10, which is 60, expressed as a fraction of all the people who actually took the screening test, which is a total of 100 people, if you count off these people, that would be a prevalence of 60%. So here we have a prevalence of 60% of this disease. Now we want to see if it has any effect or any relation to the sensitivity or specificity. One thing to note is that sensitivity and specificity have to do with the actual test itself, and if you change prevalence of a disease, you're not actually changing the mechanics of the test itself you're just changing the frequency of that of that disease in the population so we know that sensitivity for example is the people who actually have the disease and are correctly identified as having the disease meaning the true positives over all the people who have the disease meaning the true positives plus false negatives so in this case our prevalence here would be 50 over 60 I'll write it here. It would be 50 over 60, right? Yeah, which is basically 5 over 6. So we'll just keep it as 5 over 6. Let's say you had a machine that you were using for screening people for a certain disease. Well, let's apply that machine to this scenario where all these people, they took this test using that machine, and that machine has a sensitivity of 5 over 6. In other words, so for uh, from all these 100 people who took the who who went through that machine, 60 of them actually had the disease and of those 60, 50 of them were actually correctly classified as having the disease. Therefore the sensitivity was 5 over 6 or 50 over 60. Well, that sensitivity is a fixed percentage because it's a property of that machine and unless if you change something in that machine and make it more effective in actually detecting the actual true positives versus the false negatives or or so forth the sensitivity would always stay the same in other words sensitivity is a property of that machine so regardless of how many people you actually uh, um, okay um, think of it this way regardless of how many people actually took that screening test for in using that machine the sensitivity would always stay the same because you haven't actually changed anything in the machine itself it's still detecting as it does if that machine has a sensitivity of let's say 10 percent then regardless of whether you you put 100 people through that machine or if you put a thousand people through that machine or you put 5,000 people through that machine the sensitivity will always be 10 percent always it will always detect that much as the sensitivity so even if you change the prevalence of a disease the sensitivity will always remain the same because you're not actually changing anything in the mechanics of that machine to make it more effective in actually detecting those true positives or determining those true po positives from all the people with the disease again because sensitivity is a fraction it's a, it's a ratio Another way you could rem remember that or see that is let's say if the prevalence instead of 60 was 600 here. Well, since sensitivity is a fraction um, to make up that prevalence, that sensitivity is not going to change. And all that's going to happen is this positive here, the, the true positives would just become 500, let's say, and the true negatives would just become 100 in order for the prevalence to become 600. Again, because it's just a fractional. So sensitivity will not change regardless of the prevalence of the disease. Specificity will not change at all either and you can see that clearly because specificity has to do with these, this set of the, the people who took the test which is the healthy people and uh, it has absolutely nothing to do with prevalence because prevalence is actually the people who are diseased not the people who are healthy. 
So in summary, we, we can say that prevalence has no effect on sensitivity or specificity. Positive predictive value is that you've already got uh, the test, you already did the test, and you got a positive test result. So from all the people who were tested positive from this screening test, means either th who th they could either be true positives or false positives. How many of them were actually true positive? Well, in this case, we have 50 over 50 plus 10, which is 60. So it's 50 over 60 or 5 over 6. Now, as mentioned earlier, if you were to change the prevalence of a disease, the amount of people, the, um, the amount of people who are actually classified as diseased would be increasing, right? Because the prevalence is increasing, so you have more people who are who are diseased. But the sensitivity and the specificity would remain the same, and since the sensitivity is a percentage, it would change correspondingly according to the change in prevalence. So. Another way you could see this is that if prevalence was, let's say, changed to 600 here, uh, therefore, this in, in order to keep the sensitivity to be at the same percentage, the positives and negatives would change correspondingly. So in this case, let's say this became 500 and this became 100. Now, if we look at what, ha what that does to the positive predictive value, well, what you notice is that what happens is that the true positives actually changed because you increased it, right? But the false positives stayed the same. So actually, there is a uh, change in the true positives, and if you if you actually calculate that, for example, in this case, now it would actually become 500 over 500 plus 10. So it would actually be 500. So our our new positive predictive value would become 500 over 510, which is different than 5 over 6. And if you use the calculator and see, they actually represent totally different percentages as well. Therefore, that would mean that the positive predictive value is actually, it actually changes uh, with changes in prevalence. And how does it change? Well, let's see. 5 over 6 is 83%, about 83%, while 500 over 510 is 98%. That means that with an increase in prevalence, we had an increase in positive predictive value, substantially. You can also think of it like this, that in if, I if in a given population, if you have more prevalence of a disease, meaning more people have that disease, well, then the likelihood of a test result that is positive being truly positive is actually higher because you have more people with the disease. So if you had a population of a thousand people and of them, uh, 500 of them have a d the disease, th and that means that your your prevalence is 500 500 over a thousand. And let's say now instead in that population of 1,000 people, now actually 900 of them has have the disease. So your prevalence is actually 900 over a thousand now. So um, instead of having a prevalence of about 50 percent, you have a prevalence of about 90 percent. Well, how and let's say you did uh, randomly you did a screening test in both of the populations. Which which positive screening? Which uh, let's say you got a screening test result of positive in both populations. Well, which uh, positive screening test would you be more confident in? Would it be the one with the lower prevalence or the one with the, the population with the higher prevalence? Well, of course it would be the one with the population of a higher prevalence because you can be more confident that these people are actually more likely to be truly positive because there is a high, higher prevalence of this disease. So you could say that if the prevalence increases or when the prevalence increases your positive test result is more likely to be truly positive. So as the prevalence increases your positive predictive value increases. Now let's see what happens with negative predictive value. Negative predictive value is you had all the people with the negative test results who could either be true negatives or false negatives and you see how many of them actually have no disease. In other words, how many of them are actually truly negative. In this case, it would be 30 over 30 plus 10, which is 40. Sorry, uh, yeah, over 30 plus 10 over here, which would be 40. So 30 over, t over 40, which is 3 over 4. So our negative predictive value in this case is 3 over 4. Now once again, if the prevalence increases or changes, the sensitivity gets affected. And the sensitivity, sorry, I mean the sensitivity, well, not 
the percentage as a sensitive the sensitivity as a percentage does not change, but the actual numbers here change to represent that prevalence. For example, if the prevalence here changed to 600, again we would have to see a change in order to keep the sensitivity fraction to be same. We would have to see a change such as this in the diseased population. That would mean that our false negatives also changed. And since negative predictive value is reliant on those false negatives as well, we can see here the false negatives have changed. Then it actually changes our negative predictive value as well. So now if we were to calculate the negative predictive value, so even though the true negatives are staying the same, but if we were to calculate the negative predictive value in this case, it would be 30 over all the people who actually tested negative, in this case it would be 310. That is 30 over 310. And if you check with the calculator, 3 over 4, which was the original negative predictive value before changing the prevalence, and now with an increase in prevalence, the negative predictive value is 30 over 310. That would become 30 over 310. I mean, that's just so little, obviously, you can tell. So that's almost like 10%. So you went from a negative predictive value of 75% to a negative predictive value of 10%. So what that means is as the prevalence increases, the negative predictive value decreases. So, in summary, uh, well, and you can also think of it that way, in, in the same way that if you had two sets of population and one of them had a higher prevalence, any time you would have uh, a negative test result in both of the populations, you would be more li more likely it would be more likely that that negative test result is truly negative in a population with a higher prevalence. Uh, I'm sorry, in a population with lower prevalence rather than a population with a higher prevalence which means that prevalen prevalence must be inversely rela related to negative predictive value. So as prevalence increases, negative predictive value decreases, and as prevalence decreases, negative predictive value increases. So in summary, prevalence has no effect on sensitivity or specificity, um, and prevalence has a direct relationship with positive predictive value. So as prevalence increases, PPV increases, and as prevalence decreases, PPV decreases. And prevalence has an, an inverse relationship with negative predictive values. So as prevalence increases, NPV decreases, and as prevalence decreases, NPV increases.